Hello, everyone. Uh, we are uh, a group of researchers who will talk about information sharing with minority uh, Dravidian languages, a case of COVID-19 misbusters. Uh, the presenters will be uh, Sri Kumar from Dravidian University, Sung Hun Lee from International Christian University in IIT Guwahati, and uh, MS Paras Kumar from Dravidian University. Uh, other people in this presentation uh, who work with the presentation together is Tehan Won from Studio Seacraft, uh, Elena Kulidobrova from Central Connecticut State University, and Liliana Sanchez from University of Illinois at Chicago. So uh, when the COVID-19 happened, uh, the pandemic created a situation where information sharing with minority speakers became very urgent. The World Health Organization, uh, uh, recognizing the rapid spread of misinformation uh, through social medias in all over the uh, all the corner of the world, uh, started creating a website named Misbusters, devoted specifically to information. Uh, that uh, may be misleading uh, to the public. And uh, they shared the correct information through them. Originally, this information was only available in the six official languages of the United Nations, which meant that minority language communities would not receive a timely information that uh, uh, was important to them. The six official languages uh, are English, French, Spanish, Russian, Chinese, and Arabic. So here are some examples of the Mistbusters. Uh, currently on the website, there are 150 languages version uh, available. And uh, this is basically an English version. Uh, as you can see, there are uh, numbered uh, Mistbusters taken from the uh, website of the World Health Organization. And we also accompanied them uh, with uh, small icons that represent the meaning of each of these uh, myths uh, so that they are uh, more readily understood. Yes. Oh, th thank you, Lee. Uh, in fact, it is because of your initiation, uh, we could get into this area of thinking about uh, uh, the COVID, COVID narratives in Dravidian languages. Uh, and in just after, even the, during the time of lockdown, just before the lockdown in India, uh, we were in the field work. And what happened suddenly, uh, we were told that Government of India is going for a complete field work, complete lockdown. You have to come back to university. So from the field, we came back to university. Uh, so then next day, we're all are going back to our homes. So when I reached to home, you know, we were in the field work. Then I asked my field work, to my, 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 my team, uh, uh, are you in touch with that our community speakers? Because we were doing a field work with Erakora language communities. We are documenting their language. So what happened, you know, my team, especially Mr. Bharat uh, and Raja, they are talking to the community and see what we found is that, uh, uh, we want to know that what community is doing because we are all at home. Uh, we are just sitting at home. And then we checked with the community uh, on which, on with, with whom we were working. So we were, came to know three things, number one, the community is completely disconnecting from the mainstream society. We were used to go there. They used to come to our studio. They used to go to outside to sell the products and live. We, they used to come to us to help us to give the data, but suddenly it is disconnected. Uh, this, see, as a faculty, as a scholar, we are getting fellowship, we are getting salary, we are at home. How do they live? They lost income. That is the one thing uh, we heard about the community. Then I told uh, my uh, team, uh, you just to pay some money to the community, uh, you know, because of they have to survive there. And the most, uh, you know, unexpected things which we came to know about that, uh, in a mainstream society, we have a, you know, flow of information about the COVID in Malayalam, in Hindi, in Telugu, almost all the major languages, we have a flow of information, but, when we talk to the community, they are not getting any information about COVID in their language. That was something very, you know, shocking for us. See why it is shocking that we were documenting a language, Erakula. The moment the lockdown happened, we came back to our home. We came, you know, we are getting the information about the COVID. They are not getting information about the COVID. 
if that that time the information of covid is necessary to prevent us from the covid so you know then what happened you know we can see that spread of information information were spread across major languages major in the language in the sense you know the state languages in india like tamil malayalam hindi and majority i was talking to some of my friend in different parts of india they are all doing field work so it is very it, it, it is very you know shocking to know that none of the community is getting information about covid in their mother tongue see they are all getting information in the dominant language on which they are depending for their survival that is the uh, next that is situation which we have experienced uh, and see uh, then you know what happened you know we 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 done a interesting things and i told bharat why don't you continue the field work uh, by doing online so you know bharat you know he innovated an idea he told that you know what i will do i will i will contact some my friends there actually you know when we are doing field work we have something called rapport those who help us to be in touch with the community the mobile phone were connected so we asked them you collect a uh, five minutes video about covid narrative how covid affect their life so that is the uh, you know uh, uh, that is what we have done so then we got the information about covid so this information we 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 are using two way this 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 covid narrative number one this can be used as a corpus for language documentation this can be used as a natural performance of language documentation second thing this will tell how covid how lockdown affected their life so just to play can you play this one लाकडउनोल असल see this is this is the way the covid affected their life you can see that all this video people are making something this material should be sold to the mainstream society then only they will get the money to survive this is the way covid affected their life so we have around 65 video like this uh, and 
uh, which we can use for documentation and to document how the COVID affect their life. Next slide, please. See, this, the situation of India, uh, there is a linguistic hierarchy in India. So we have major languages and uh, state languages, huge population state languages. And this is something called scheduled languages like Malayalam, Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, Hindi. These are the mainstream languages where we have a very good literary traditions, all the news, media, public sphere, everything. Then we have around 99 non-scheduled languages, which is not uh, included in the fifth schedule. Then we have a huge number of minority languages. We call minority languages because this language does not have, do not have literary tradition. They don't have script at all. So that is the linguistic pyramid of India. So what happened in the COVID, in the COVID information is flow, you know, flowing only to the top of the pyramid, not in the bottom of the pyramid. That is, the, that is what we have done uh, 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 in collaboration with uh, uh, Dr. Lee, how to give the information in, the, uh, in, the, in all these minority languages. So when you come to Dravidian, uh, we have 26 languages. Out of 26, we very few languages like Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, Malayalam, uh, Tulu, uh, we have uh, uh, script. Remaining languages, we have a huge number of uh, other languages. Those languages does not have script at all. So our focus was to give COVID information in other languages. Next slide. So you see, uh, uh, in the I told you, uh, just after lockdown, uh, during lockdown, I left to home. Being at home, I got a mail from, I got a communication about uh, uh, giving uh, COVID information uh, in all the languages uh, by Lee in the linguist list. So I sent a mail to him and I just sent a mail to him respond, uh, expecting a mail from, uh, respond from tomorrow. But just within, a, within, a, within an hour, I got a mail that we were connected. I, that time I don't know where he's sitting. We were connected. So I was translating uh, that uh, COVID uh, myth, uh, uh, COVID myth plus uh, uh, developed by WHO in Malayalam. Then I contacted some of my friends who are in Andhra Pradesh, who are in Kerala. And what happened? We sent this uh, uh, that English source text to many languages, even Hindi, Telugu, Tamil, Kannada, all languages we sent. So that is the one good thing. That time, almost all the people are at home. It is the beginning of lockdown. Everybody is having a free time. Within two, three days, we got around few number of translations, which we are sending to uh, uh, send. Within a, within a day, he will make it as compose it as a text and image, sending back to us, uploading it. It was a wonderful experience, which we have around, uh, I think around one and a half months, we were doing, we were providing information. Uh, on this uh, uh, COVID myth, COVID myth plus states in, in Indian languages, especially uh, uh, from Kerala, University of Kerala, Dr. Prema, and here uh, my, my, my colleagues, Dr. Keshav Murthy, and Benaras from the Northern area, Benaras, uh, Dr. Praveen, we were all collaborating this one. I think almost around the 20, 23 languages in India, we could cover within a year, we were within, a, within a one month. See, if, if, you're, if you're doing, see that whenever there is a necessity, everybody come, came forward. I, I'm very thankful to Dr. Sen, uh, Dr. Lee, uh, who, is, who is initiating. Uh, I think he's also having a good team. Uh, my team, I don't have a team. We made a network of people who made this uh, wonder. That is the, you can see the website, uh, that much language which we have provided. Next slide. And this is the outcome. So we translated into Dravidian, we have translated into 15 languages. And you know, we have sent to the, even I in Kerala, we made this printout to send to uh, some of the uh, uh, communities also. See, uh, uh, you may ask a question, you know, majority of the languages does not have, do not have script, how do you use? See, almost all the tribal communities in India, I don't want to say tribal communities and minority language communities, they're all bilinguals. So they, they, are, they are literate, they're educated in the mainstream languages. For example, in Kerala, almost all the minority language speakers can read and write Malayalam. 
so we have we used to do the malayalam script we used to do the dominant script uh, to to make it print and even some of the languages we made a audio also so malayalam telugu tamil koya kolami paniya kannada tulu irula kuruba adiya muduga muduva almost a good number of languages uh, we have given the translation and so, tamil i told you some of the uh, communities in 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 the tamil and tamil nadu and kerala border some of the people know they literate in tamil some of the community literate in malayalam so we have provided translations or transliteration of the same translation to two two scripts also and uh, in addition uh, some of the languages we have given audio and video also we have given uh, you know uh, and you know see all this activity is done by volunteers we didn't spend any money i think if kerala only some amount has been paid to some of the uh, speakers uh, see in our case we have done this all translations because of voluntary work and the community speakers come out see, community speakers come out they want to communicate they want to tell about covid in their languages they come out they contribute to the translations that is the way we made this small wonder in the lockdown time next slide sir this is the outcome see malayalam tamil telugu kannada so these are the major languages and you can see that in the uh, uh, you can see that that uh, next slide sir please see uh, uh, you can see uh, koya kolami paniya irula kuruba this language does not have do not have script but we used the uh, a script of malayalam tamil kannada for this languages so therefore at the same time we used it we given the audio we given the script by audio they can listen and they can take print out this is the way we we made a, 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 a this challenging job uh, uh, in in the lockdown time to provide for providing information on covid in 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 revealed languages next slide see this is i told you this was a uh, this was something like an a participatory uh, community activity which we have done and uh, you can see that you know that unique website which uh, uh, dr sen is maintaining it is having 927 you know peep, uh, times visit is there and you know that uh, we have a different mode of uh, you know providing informations as as uh, as in the video audio image file text file so at any mode see in, in some of the in indian area in india some of the area you may not have a you know connectivity but that area we can have a connectivity in the whatsapp sometime we may have a connectivity website so wherever the forms so you it, it, it you know i think the world should notice this activity which we have done in a short period of time you know giving you know making the community to participate translate in their lang in their languages making the community to share the information in their languages so it was something like a, a totally a, 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 an innovative way uh, we have done a, a, a linguistic activism uh, during this lockdown time so after uh, working with uh, sri and also baras and multiple uh, linguists the wonderful linguists in india uh, on dravidian language uh, we realized like what is next or what are the next steps that we can take uh, in particular for the non literary languages that do not have writing system uh, what else uh, in addition to the covid narratives that were being collected uh, can we obtain uh, what else uh, can we obtain in order to help these communities or like uh, work together with the communities actually in the future so uh, we uh, looked into this uh, health questionnaire that was developed by Liliana Sanchez and Elena Kulidobrova uh, uh, in Peru actually this questionnaire was uh, developed uh, for the Shipibo and Quechua people uh, however uh, the questionnaire itself was supposed to be uh, uh, universal for uh, all indigenous communities and when the questionnaire was developed uh, in fact the team included uh, a doctor who was specialized in infectious diseases and also they had two additional cultural consultant 
who worked uh, heavily with the minority languages in Peru and also with the Ministry of Culture in Peru. So uh, the questionnaire itself has four parts and 62 questions. And uh, the parts had demographic information, asking demographic information, language background, and also about the pandemic itself, as well as uh, asking them to judge uh, some statements about uh, COVID-19. So uh, uh, Baras will now uh, introduce us a case study of the Yeracula language uh, based on uh, information obtained from the uh, questionnaire. Thank you, Professor Lee. Uh, for giving this opportunity. Now, uh, Ericula. Ericula is a, an endangered South Dravidian language in India. It is mainly spoken in Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Kerala, some parts of in Maharashtra and Odisha as well. According to 2001 11 uh, Celsius, there are like 58,000 population speakers were there. Ericula can, uh, can also be called as Kurub, Kurubasha, which is meant Kula is like nothing but Cast Kulavata and the next slide. Uh, this data is based on a questionnaire. This was uh, started in January 2021, collected by myself. My language is a Telugu, which is a dominant language for the Ericula speakers. Uh, I have collected uh, this data, I mean, this survey from four people in the Andhra Pradesh district, so Andhra Pradesh state, in the part of Chitur district. Yeah. So next slide. So this is the data what I collected from the uh, people. Uh, first of all, the age. I have collected from the four speakers. It's like 24, the age of 24, 48, 67, and 58. So two females and two males. The childhood language is both. They're, they're basically, the Ericula speakers is a... Uh, bilinguals they speak both languages telugu and erukula when it comes to tamil nadu they speak erukula and tamil when it comes to uh, kerala maybe uh, they speak uh, malayalam as well as erukula so they are bilinguals everywhere in india so work they basically uh, they work in different uh, they are wandering tribes they are wandering tribes uh, they don't uh, stay in a particular way, particular uh, particular place for their business. They usually travel from one place to another place. So we call them wandering tribes. So next slide. So uh, when I asked about the, uh, when I asked about COVID, they were they were telling uh, their own narratives in their language. They were saying like, what do you mean by, uh, what is the meaning of coronavirus? They were like, coronavirus, some people told it's a virus, which come from the uh, people. So everyone everyone knows that uh, it is a virus. And they, they know this virus, um, they know this information by media, uh, telephones, as well as by the neighbors. So next, sir. yeah. This information uh, get from the people, uh, those who are staying from the neighbors. No, within the community people also, they were getting this information. But they were uh, but they were not that familiar about this information because they are not staying in one place. They are all wandering tribes. So uh, when I asked them, what is the symptoms that you get uh, when you get COVID? Then they said like uh, fever, uh, fever, uh, cold, body pains, cough, and all. So they, 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 were, they were saying all these things. So when I asked them like, uh, uh, at what age people do the corona, uh, corona will affect it? Then they said like uh, some people says that uh, like the old people they may get uh, coronavirus and some some other people says like no idea like it 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 may get it any age it may get in any age of the uh, it any age. The next thing is uh, like how do people get sick with coronavirus? Then they started saying that the washing hands without maintaining social distance. And some other says like uh, those who got affected more with cold, cough, fever, like uh, when uh, these are the symptoms of co uh, Corona. So based on this, uh, 
uh, things they used to uh, maintain some social distance and all so next slide so these are the so this is like myths of coronavirus yeah so these are the uh, questionnaires respond uh, these these are the speakers responded for this questionnaire and they were like uh, taking a hot bath does not prevent corona virus like some people said like true true and one guy said like false it's like th these are a part of a uh, survey which you got from the speakers yeah this so uh, yeah so for us uh, as far as just showed we have now wells of uh, information uh, about uh, the yaraculas view and uh, let's uh, wrap up after having short discussion uh, interestingly about the coronavirus itself uh, the speakers responded uh, coronavirus is not a disease but a virus it's still actually a question what is what is it actually is it a disease or not and uh, even in other communities or like places like japan some people might say it's not a disease it's a cause of a disease but it's not a disease itself so uh, you can you may say they are right about this or you may uh, we may need to uh, probe a little bit more interestingly uh, 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 the symptoms were well identified as baras just shared uh, however, the cause of the virus uh, was not always clear by the uh, community, uh, by the speakers of the Yerakuna. Uh, instead, of, when we ask about the cause, uh, they say things like uh, spreading of the virus is the cause of the coronavirus, which is not necessarily what uh, uh, we know of as uh, the cause. Interestingly, the source of information happened to be media and neighbors, uh, which uh, probably uh, reflecting uh, their nature of the wandering tribe. Uh, uh, the choices also included, as in the last bullet point, uh, clinic or community leaders, but uh, uh, interestingly, none of uh, the respondent, uh, we had only four of them, uh, nobody responded that they would actually seek information from clinic or community leaders per se. Uh, interestingly, uh, uh, their uh, vulnerability age was a little bit lower than uh, uh, what uh, other medias would uh, portray in Japan, for example. The vulnerable age was portrayed as uh, 65 and plus or 70 and plus, uh, but uh, all of the, uh, uh, except one, uh, three uh, respondents said 50 and above uh, for pot potential danger or vulnerable to this. Uh, so we will skip the uh, next thing and there were some true first responses and we will share the slides uh, separately on the video in the, below the video so you can have a look at the responses and ask questions and answers uh, during the presentation at the conference so uh, in this talk we uh, first uh, presented a, a short uh, project uh, or like another short project or project uh, about COVID-19 misbusters that we translated into multiple Dravidian languages as a collaborative work between Dravidian University, University of Kerala, and also uh, uh, some other colleagues in India, as well as uh, with uh, Japan and Korea, uh, where the designer comes from, uh, designer and uh, from Korea. And we uh, reported that uh, now some of the information at least that was not available in uh, minority languages are available uh, in several format. And uh, we also introduced uh, uh, what Bharat collected as COVID-19 narratives, and we saw a little video. And then uh, we had a pilot study uh, of the health questionnaire where uh, we realized the Yarakula community as a wandering uh, tribe or wandering community members, uh, they know what the coronavirus is, but, and they're familiar with the symptoms, but not necessarily they are uh, uh, not necessarily about the cause of the coronavirus, which probably needs to be uh, filled as um, as we go forward uh, with this information. And also interestingly, uh, their uh, strong reliance on media and neighbors or family members suggest that we really need to get the information, correct information out in the media, uh, in addition to, of course, clinics and local leaders, but for the Yeracula community members in particular, uh, having the correct information uh, within the community by other people and through the media seem to be a really important step uh, to fight uh, this pandemic. So uh, 
these are some references. Uh, we thank uh, uh, all these other uh, people and the grant uh, uh, that uh, funded some of the earlier uh, uh, activities. Thank you.